So I want to start this video off with a story that I think is going to help everyone watching understand why a drone like DJI's M30T is such an important and valuable tool when it comes to conducting search and rescue operations. So just the other night, I got a call from a local police department asking if I'd help with the search of a missing girl. She ran away from her home, night was approaching, so we needed to find her fast because it was getting very cold outside. Without any hesitation, I reached for the M30T because I knew that it would be the perfect drone for the job. So I loaded up my car with the drone and a portable power station to charge batteries on the go and I was off to help try and find this missing person. Now basically my workflow was to fly in between 250 and 300 feet to try and scan neighborhoods, woods, parking lots, highways, roads, literally anything within the search area. I was trying to find a hot spot on the ground using the thermal camera. The visual camera was basically useless. I mean some of the neighborhoods were a little bit more well lit than others but the thermal camera is primarily the strong suit of this camera system on this drone because you can basically see at nighttime. You can see trees, you can see animals, you can see people, cars, homes. It literally gives you the ability to see at nighttime and easily pick out people in areas where they probably shouldn't be. So there are two clips in particular that I want to share with you that really showcase how powerful the camera system is here on the M30T, especially at nighttime when conducting one of these search and rescue operations. The first clip is a person that I found walking on a dirt path behind one of the neighborhoods that we were actively searching in. I flew down closer to get a better look and at first glance I kind of thought that it was a male just by the way that they were walking and their stature, but I wanted wanted to make sure that we covered all of our options, all of our ground. So I called into a ground team. They went over, they asked that person questions. They unfortunately didn't know where she was. So we moved on from there and continued to search. This second clip I think though is even more powerful because it shows how quickly you can clear a large section of woods using a drone flying above the trees. So I was kind of cruising around the neighborhood trying to support some of the people on the ground that were looking for her under porches and things like that. I went and I came across three individuals that were helping with the search on the ground that were about to go through this wooded section of the neighborhood and instead of them going through that area yelling her name trying to look with flashlights I simply flew my drone overhead saw nothing no thermal hotspots inside of that area and told them to go and look elsewhere and not waste their time rummaging through the woods that single clip right there should instantly prove how valuable the m30t is when it comes to conducting a search and rescue operation as it can effectively and reliably clear such a large amount of area in a short amount of time therefore helping you speed up your efforts in trying to find the person that you are looking for. Now, for those of you that might be wondering, yes, we did end up finding the little girl at around 9 p.m., so it didn't get too late into the night. She was actually hiding underneath of a porch. The state police found her, so no, it wasn't the drone that was able to directly pinpoint her location, but nonetheless, I'm so happy that she's okay. I'm happy that I was able to help, and I'm also happy that the drone is able to prove to be very valuable, helping search such large areas of land. Now, when it comes to DJI's Enterprise lineup, they've got plenty of drones that you can use for a search and rescue from the M300 to the the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, the Mavic 3 Thermal to the M30T here, and I think that this is your best bet, your go-to search and rescue drone because of its power and portability. In my previous videos on this drone, I've highlighted its capabilities from the aircraft to the camera, but now I want to showcase how this could translate into a scenario where an individual or a team could utilize this entire platform for conducting search and rescue missions. Now, really quick, I've mentioned in the past that there are two different versions of this drone, with the M30 just having a zoom and wide camera, as well as the laser rangefinder, but for search and rescue, you really need to go with the M30T, T standing for thermal, as this version of the drone has a camera with a thermal sensor. This will make nighttime operations much easier as you can easily identify the person that you're trying to look for just like we saw in those clips I shared towards the beginning of this video. To help you understand where the M30 fits in DJI's Enterprise lineup, I've got all their major offerings sitting here in front of me. So I've got the Mavic, this is the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, I've got the Matrice 30, the M30T, and I've got the M300. So this is the big boy, right? And what I love about the M30 is that it sits in between these two drones and offers the best of both worlds. You've got a super powerful drone that packs a lot of the same features as the M300 into a smaller foldable design that takes the portability of the Mavic. So again, you've got the best of both worlds, giving you a really powerful package in a more portable form factor. Having a portable system is a must for search and rescue missions because you're always going to be on the move. This case is small enough to fit into the cab of a truck, the trunk of a car. You can even carry it in a backpack if you needed to hike and then launch. In that backpack, you can even fit extra batteries too. On the line of portability, the setup time is super fast as you just unfold the arms, turn 
turn the drone on, turn the remote on, and fly. The M300, on the other hand, would need to be built by attaching the camera and the landing gear. On the topic of speed, just like the M300, the M30 also has a dual battery system that not only makes it safer in the air, so if one battery fails, it can rely on the other to power it for the rest of the flight, but it also lets you hot swap those batteries for a minimal downtime on the ground. Like, you might be on the drone for 10 seconds, if that. No more waiting for the drone to recalibrate and the GPS to reconnect, it just goes right back up. Now, as I mentioned, this drone has some serious power for its size. The specs are exactly what you'd expect from an Enterprise drone in 2023, giving you a reliable flight experience. It has a fast top speed to get you from spot to spot quickly. It's agile when flying vertically, so up and down as well. It can withstand some pretty brutal conditions like high winds and even a heavy rainfall as it's IP55 waterproof. Perhaps even more important though is the 41 minute flight time, so you'll be able to stay in the air when searching for a very long time. And the transmission between the drone and remote is incredibly strong for a seamless flight. No matter your distance, you'll get a reliable downlink to your remote with a clear video feed from OcuSync 3 Enterprise so you can increase those distances that you can search with the drone from your takeoff point. So the drone itself is more than capable of everyday flying, all day missions. You can really put this through hell and back. But what really impresses me is its level of redundancy, right? The safety features that are built into this drone, which are mirrored from the larger M300. I went over all of this information in much greater detail in my Matrice 30 aircraft overview video, but this list here shows all the safety features built into this drone. This is important in any scenario that you put this drone in and isn't only limited to search and rescue. Whenever recommending a drone to a police department, fire department, construction company, literally anyone that is going to be putting some serious hours on their drone, I can't recommend the M30 and M300 enough because of these safety and redundancy features. I mean, think about it. You could have this drone in the air nonstop for days amongst multiple pilots, and you want to make sure that if something goes wrong, the drone has backup systems to rely on. Okay, so enough about the drone itself. Now let's move on to the camera because this is what really makes this entire system useful in a search and rescue scenario. I really don't want to spend time nerding out over the specs of the camera because really, you're going to be analyzing the live feed from the drone in real time, trying to find your subject, the person that you're looking for. It's definitely important to know what your camera system can do, so I am going to kind of give you the rundown of the specs here on the screen, but now let me give you a better look at what this camera can do by actually going outside and showing you. If you'll be flying during the day, both the wide and zoom camera have plenty of resolution and dynamic range to give you a viewable image. The wide camera is great for cruising around and sweeping through streets, fields, or anywhere you might be looking for someone. This is the best camera to use for navigating around too, as it gives you the best view of what's in front of the drone. So it's the widest field of view. The zoom camera, on the other hand, gives you plenty of power to zoom down and further identify what you're looking at. It uses a mix of optical and digital zoom for a good blend of distance and clarity. I wouldn't recommend flying around with the zoom camera active all the time though, because it could lead to you crashing. But this is of course a powerful tool for getting a closer look while keeping your drone high in the sky and away from any obstacles near the ground. Chances are, if you're conducting a search and rescue mission, you'll be in some pretty tough environments. The best tool to use though by far is the thermal camera, which is best suited for nighttime operations. If you're trying to use this on a hot summer day, it'd be pretty much useless as the body heat of a person would just blend in with the surrounding environment. At nighttime though, when the temperature drops, a human would be easy to pick out, especially with the resolution of this sensor. It has a resolution of 640 pixels on the long side, so when flying at higher altitudes, you can still identify a person from say an animal or some other anomaly that is holding heat. To take us back to the clip I shared at the beginning of the video, you'll notice that when I'm flying up at 200 feet, I can easily identify a person down on the ground. Like there are three individuals on the ground and they are really easy to spot. And as I fly over them and look through the woods, I see no thermal activity whatsoever, no hot spots. So I know instantly that the person that I was looking for in that scenario wasn't in that area. Now I of course came across a lot of other animals, deer, foxes, horses even, and you can really easily tell because of the high resolution of the camera that that isn't a person, right? If you just zoom down, fly down closer, you can easily tell like, hey, that's too small. That's a small fox or that's a small rabbit. Maybe you see a larger animal. It could be a deer, but just know that when you're using the thermal camera, it should be pretty easy to pick out what looks like a human body. Now, while you might not use this feature in the heat of the moment, I just wanted to mention the smart low light photo shooting mode, which is flat out ridiculous. Like even in a pitch black parking lot, it can produce photos with the zoom camera that look like they were captured during the daytime. Just to give you an example, 
example, here's what I saw in my live feed. This here is a photo taken with the wide camera, which is actually kind of decent. And then here is a photo taken with smart low light photo taken from the zoom camera. It really is impressive. Now it would be really cumbersome to fly around, take photographs, let that photograph process, and then go to the album and view it. Like that's a lot of time. Your drone is just hovering there when you could actually be looking for the person or subject that you're looking for. So I'd say the thermal camera will be your best bet for most of your search and rescue missions at nighttime. But if you do need a color view, a more clear view that isn't the thermal view, you could always use this photo mode, the smart low light photo mode, kind of as a backup option. Now on the topic of cameras, I just want to mention that the FPV camera used by the pilot is also really good at seeing in low light scenarios. So if you have two pilots operating the drone, one flying and one controlling the camera, the pilot that is in charge of flying will still have a good view of general obstacles in the way, even when there's very little light. Don't rely on the FPV camera to fly in tight spaces in low light scenarios though, as you won't be able to see smaller objects like branches or power lines all that well. Now I briefly want to touch on some other pieces of technology that are used here with the M30 platform that can be very helpful in a search and rescue scenario. The first is the remote controller. The RC Plus is like the ultimate way to fly a drone and offers a lot of benefits when using this for search and rescue missions. The screen size is of course great. It's got a 1200 nit 7 inch 1080p panel and has a full sized HDMI port so you can output your video feed to a larger monitor that others can easily view instead of craning their neck over your shoulder to see the screen on your controller. All the buttons on the remote also make it really easy to operate the drone fluidly so there's no second guessing how to make changes while in the air. Once you master this remote you'll be able to control everything you need with tactile buttons mid-flight without having to dig through the settings and different menus. Finally, the removable battery and internal battery give you a long runtime with the ability to hot swap batteries for an indefinite runtime on the remote controller. You can just keep feeding batteries and go. The final piece of technology that I want to touch on are the attachments made for the M30 that attach right to the front of the drone using the four screw mounts on the top side. While I don't have any of these attachments, I do have some colleagues that use them on a daily basis and they say that they wouldn't fly without them. They are that valuable. I mean, being able to see better and communicate remotely is huge for search and rescue operations. So speaking of colleagues, I figured I'd leave it to a true professional to help us understand why the M30T is such a great drone to use for search and rescue. So I've got my friend Kyle Nordfors here with me from Weber County Search and Rescue. Kyle, how you doing? Doing well, thanks. How are you? Good. So tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of how you've helped Weber County adopt drones in general. Well, uh, like I said, my name is Kyle Nordforce. I am the drone team coordinator for Weber County Search and Rescue. We are a moderate sized county in northern Utah. We have the tons of mountains, lakes, streams, all sorts of uh, wild terrain. And in when you're trying to search for people in that type of environment where you have uh, 4,000 foot cliffs, it's imperative to be able to reach them quickly. And drones just fit that bill in a very quick, economic, and uh, efficient manner. Yeah, so now you actually had a unique opportunity to get your hands on the M30T a little bit early, and we were discussing one of the scenarios that you actually used the drone in. So why don't you give us a play-by-play -play kind of to that very first save that you had with the drone? Yeah, we felt very fortunate to be able to get that our hands on that M30T before it was officially released. And I'll tell you what, it was absolutely instrumental in saving the life of one of our residents in Weber County. Uh, this particular gentleman was out split boarding one evening and ended up getting lost. He was following somebody else's tracks and, um, and his skin started icing up. So he decided to kind of just buck, uh, hunker down and call 911. Um, with that, we had a decent idea as to where he was on the mountain. He gave us the uh, trailhead that he started on, but then he thought he had moved to another trailhead. And um, so when we showed up on scene, the M30T with its quick deploy ability, it was obviously our very first choice, even though we didn't have a lot of time or a lot of experience with it. We unfolded it, launched it, put it up on scene. And within 10 minutes, with the use of the thermal camera and also the zoom camera and also with a little bit of the night scene, we were able to find his tracks really uh, quickly and get eyes on him within 10 minutes. Uh, with that, we were able to lower the drone a little bit closer to him so that he was able to see that, hey, we, we can see you, we know where you are. And I have fantastic video of him just waving at the drone, trying to make himself as visible as possible. And uh, you know, with when you have, uh, 
very deep snow like that and compacted snow like in their trails, the emissivity of the different packed uh, levels of snow, you can actually see trails very easily when you're using a, a palette like white hot or black hot, it just pops. And uh, so with that, we were able to find them very quickly. Yeah, and now I have to give a quick plug to Kyle here and his video production skills because you put together a great video of that entire scenario. So I'm going to leave a link down below if you want to check that out because it kind of shares everything from the 911 call to you actually finding him to you actually going up and rescuing him, you, you and your team. So I do want to give a quick plug to that. I'll leave that link below because it really is kind of a great um, video. It's a great story about how drones can be used to save lives. Now, speaking of saving lives, like give me a rough estimate of kind of how many lives you've saved or how many lives have been have been kind of helped saved uh, by drones in general. Well, the way that we deploy drones in Weber County, we usually have a, a different role that we play in during every single mission. Sometimes when the drone shows up on scene, we are a hasty search mechanism. We are a tool to get out there and try to find our patients as quickly as possible. And also to get good uh, coordinates with our latitude and longitude. Other times we use the drone as a support uh, a tool to provide ambient light, whether we're using the M300 with the uh, big spotlight so that our ground teams can harness up the, the patients and, and get them repelled off the, their cliff face. But when it comes to uh, where we use the drone specifically f as a hasty search and get eyes on our patients quickly, we're, we're well within the mid 20s, probably uh, approaching 30 or so people that we have been instrumental in saving their lives. That's incredible. Now, you have a fairly large arsenal of drones, right? I mean, I kind of got the whole rundown at Airworks, DJI Airworks, all of the different drones that you have, all of the different uh, systems that you have in place. So with all these different options that you have, what makes you want to choose something like, say, the M30T over the other drones in the arsenal, like a larger M300 or maybe even a smaller Mavic 3 Enterprise or Mavic 2 Enterprise Thermal? Well, every drone has a purpose. Every, you know, every tool that you want to use for a specific uh, reason. The main difference with the M30T over the other drones is that it seems to be the tool that fits into the most uh, purposes overall. Um, when it comes to you show up on, uh, on your location at Incident Command and you need to get up and you need to get the drone up launched quickly, there is really nothing faster than the M30T. You could make an argument that the, uh, the uh, Mavic Enterprise line is quick, but it's still not as quick as the M30T. Plus you have the laser rangefinder, you have the thermal, you have the zoom camera, you have so many different capabilities with that. And I can't emphasize enough the, 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 how critical a laser rangefinder is in this because as soon as you find your patients, you need to be able to get those coordinates and radio those coordinates to your ground teams so that it, it completely eliminates the guesswork as to where the people are. Um, the M30T just fills a role. So let me re re rephrase that. The M30T fills so many roles that the other drones just don't do that it is almost always our go-to first on scene. We're pulling that M30T. That's great. I mean, you know, when I think about the drone in a lot of different aspects, I kind of think it blends the best of both worlds with an M300 and a smaller Mavic because it's got that small portable form factor with all of the amazing uh, powerful features that say the M300 has as well as all the safety features, right? I mean, there's so much redundancy built into that drone that it really does make it such a good option. So Kyle, thank you so much for coming on here. Do you have any final remarks for me? <laughs> <laughs> well, I always appreciate all the, the, the work that you put out and the way in which you have given so much information to the drone industry at large. Um, I think that one thing that uh, all drone pilots need to remember now, you are pilots and as pilots, you are part of the aviation community. Please make sure that you interact with not just uh, the drone industry, but also integrate yourself with manned aviation because we are all one big happy family. We are all aviators. We're in this together. That is awesome. Hey, Kyle, thank you so much. And to you out there watching, thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you've got any questions about the M30T, feel free to let me know down in the comment section below. Maybe Kyle himself will come and answer a couple of your questions. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace. Mm -hmm.